Okay guys, so give me a thumbs up if you are studying even though you may be tired today because that's how I feel. But I know that you guys have been watching my videos and you guys have been asking me for questions numbers 12 through 17. So I have to give it for you guys because I really want you to pass. I want you to do well. But just please give me some grace because I <laughs> I don't know. I just feel tired. Why do I feel so tired? Ah! All right. So problem number 12. So let's see what that says. It says, for which of the following equations is x equal to 6 the only solution? So we have to look at each one of these equations and we just have to solve them and see if we get x equal to 6. So let's start with this first one. 6x squared equals 0. So the opposite of squaring is the square root. So if we want to get rid of this square, we want to do square root on both sides. So when you square root a square, you just end up with whatever is inside, which is 6x. The square root of zero is just zero, okay? So now we have six x is equal to zero. The way that we get the six, the way that we get rid of the six is we divide both sides by six. So x is equal to zero divided by six, which is just equal to zero. So in option A, x is equal to zero. We're trying to find it where x is equal to six, so A would not be the correct choice. Let's go ahead and go to Two. It says x minus 6 squared equals 0. Again, we're trying to isolate the variable, the x. Right now, the x is not by itself because of the 6 and because of the square. So again, how do we get rid of the square? By doing the opposite, which is the square root. When you do the opposites, they both cancel each other out, and you're just left with what's in the inside, which is x minus 6. And the square root of 0 is just 0. Now, to get the x by itself, we have to do the opposite of subtracting 6. So we add 6 to both sides, and x is equal to 6. So for b, x is equal to 6. So this is potentially our answer, but we have to keep going and keep checking. So c says x plus 6 squared is equal to 0. All right, so we have to get rid of this square. By now, you should have realized and picked up the skill that you do the opposite, which is the square root. So we square root both sides. These cancel each other out, and you're just left with what's on the inside, x plus 6. And then you're left with the square root of 0, which is 0. You get rid of the 6 by doing the opposite of what's happening. So instead of adding 6, you subtract 6 from both sides, and x is equal to negative 6. So for c, x is equal to negative 6. We were trying to find x is equal to positive 6, so c cannot be the answer choice. So let's go ahead and do this fourth example. It's x minus 6, x plus 6 equals 0. Because this is factored and set equal to 0, we just set each part equal to 0. x minus 6 equals 0, x plus 6 equals 0. The opposite of subtracting 6 is adding 6. So x is equal to 6 in this first equation. And then to get the second one, you do the opposite of adding 6, which is subtracting 6. And x is equal to negative 6. So for the answer for 4, the two solutions is x equals 6 and x equals negative 6. But it says, for which of the following equations is x equal to 6 the only solution? So although this does have x equals 6 as one of the solutions, it's still not the answer because it's not the only solution. It also has the other six as a solution. So our answer is going to be B. So the one skill that I want you guys to have picked up from this is that anytime you're trying to get rid of X, anytime you're trying to get rid of a square, you square root both sides and they cancel each other out and you're left with whatever's underneath. All right, let's go ahead and go on to question number 13. It says, if f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 1, what is f of x plus 2? So let's just try to understand these types of problems before we go ahead and solve it. So for say, for example, they said f of 2. What that means is you would put 2 everywhere that you see an x. So it would be 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 1, and you'd go ahead and solve. So if you have f of x plus 2, wherever you see those x, you would put x plus 2. 
So instead of saying x, I would do x plus 2 squared plus 3 x plus 2 plus 1. And then I would go ahead and I would solve. So my answer would be a solution to whatever this is equal to. So we see this answer written out right here. So our answer is going to be B. So I'm going to give you another for instance, just in case I went a little bit quickly for you guys for that one. So say, for example, they said x squared plus 3x plus 1 is equal to fx. And they told us f of x is equal to x plus 5. Anywhere we saw the x, we would just insert x plus 5. So it would be x plus 5 squared plus 3 x plus 5 plus 1. So anytime you see f of x and they tell you what to insert, you just insert that value anytime you see an x in the equation. And in this case, they didn't want you to solve any further. They just wanted you to insert it into the problem. And that's what we did. So our answer choice is going to be B. All right, let's go ahead and go to question number 14. Oops, Ms. Amber didn't copy question number 14. Uh-oh, what was I thinking of? All right, so question number 14 is, what if, if any is a real solution to this? So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to write that problem out, even though I didn't screenshot it for you already. So it was asking for a real solution to 5x plus 1 plus 9 is equal to 3. So I had a love, actually, I just had a hate relationship with this problem. And the reason why I had a hate relationship with this problem is because I solved it and I got the answer that I thought it should, it should be. And then I checked the answers. Like, you know how underneath when you practice the AccuPlacer exam, you know how after they give you the answer choices, then they tell you how they got the answers and why these answers are right and why these answers are wrong. Well, I chose the wrong answer. And they said the reason why it was wrong and all this stuff. And I agree with their explanation, but I don't like their explanation. <laughs> and I don't like that the, it wasn't the answer that I got. Okay, so let me show you the proper way to do this. Because I know whatever I show you first is what's going to stick in your brain. So I'm going to show you the proper way to do this first according to the AccuPlacer exam. And then I'm going to show you what I did because it may be a mistake that you make when you're taking the test. Okay, fair? All right. So again, this is going to be how you're supposed to do it. Please remember, <laughs> I don't want you guys taking the test, getting the answer wrong, and be like, Miss Amber taught us how to... No, no, no. Do it this way. Okay, you ready? This is the way to do it. So first, you get rid of the 9 by subtracting 9 from both sides. So you're left with the square root of 5x plus 1 is equal to negative 6. Then what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to stop here and say, there is no value for x that I can put in there that when you do the square root of it, you're going to get a negative number. So anytime you do the square root of like 36, it comes out positive. If you do the square root of 49, it comes out positive. So they want us to stop here and they want you to know that there is no value that you can put in for x, no real solution, no real number that you can put in for x that is going to give you an output of a negative answer. So the answer is going to be, let me scroll back up. The answer is going to be, there is no real solution. That is what they told us. That is the answer. That's how the AccuPlacer wants you to solve it. Again, they want you to get the 9 to the other side, and then they want you to pause here, and they want you to look at the equation and say, there is no real value for x that I can put into this equation that when you square root it, the answer underneath the square root is going to give you a negative 6. That's what they want you to understand. That's what they want you to answer, and that's how they want you to do it. So the reason why this problem caused me some feelings is because number one I solved it in a different way and number two I was like wait a second if you do the square root of a number can't you get a positive seven and a negative seven technically that rule applies 
when you're in advanced algebra and you are going to learn that there's a positive and a negative square root because if you do 7 times 7, it's 49. But if you do negative 7 times negative 7, you get negative 49. Oh, you still get, sorry, positive 49. So you can have a positive integer and you can get a negative integer from the square root. But they're acting as if that rule does not apply in this scenario and that rule doesn't apply in this case. So they don't want you to do that. They don't want you to think that you can do the square root of a number and you could come up with a positive answer and a negative answer. The other thing that they don't want you to do is they don't want you to do this. And the only reason I'm showing you this is because I know that there are going to be other students who think exactly like me, especially because it's similar to what we've been doing in the other problems. So it's this square root of 5x plus 1 plus 9 is equal to 3. So I subtracted 9 from both sides and I got the square root of 5x plus 1 is equal to negative 6. But you remember to do the opposite, if you ever want to get rid of a square root, you just do the opposite. So before we had 4 squared and to get rid of it, we square rooted it. But if you have square root and you want to do the opposite, you could square it. You could do the opposite. So I thought the same way we've been doing the opposite in the other problems, I can just square both sides and that would get rid of these both things. They cancel each other out and I'd be left with 5x plus 1 equals negative 6 times negative 6, which is 36. Then I thought you could subtract 1 from both sides. 5x is equal to 35. Divide by 5, divide by 5, x is equal to 7. I thought that that's how you were supposed to solve it because that's how we've been solving it. That's how we were solving it in the prior problems. If you have a square root, do the opposite, just square it. If you have a square, do the opposite, do the square root, and you get rid of it. I thought the x is equal to 7. But the AccuPlacer actually had an explanation as to why x equals 7 is not the proper answer. And what they said is x equals 7 is actually an extraneous solution. And what that means is an extraneous solution is a solution that you can put back into the original equation to check to see if it's right, and it's not going to give you the right answer. What does that mean? So let's see if we put this back into the original problem, if it's going to give us the right answer. So it was 35 plus 1 plus 9 equals 3. Square root of 36 plus 9 equals 3. Square root of 36 is 6 plus 9 equals 3, and that is not correct. 6 plus 9 is not equal to 3. So although it is a solution, although you did do steps that should be viable according to the rules that we learn in math, although we came up with a solution that should work, technically that is not the correct answer. And the reason why it's not a correct answer is because when you put this solution into the equation, it doesn't come out properly. Now, there's another way how this can work, but I don't want to confuse you too much. All I want you guys to see is that, number one, you can think like me and you could do the problem wrong, even though you're following all the rules of math. And this is what's actually unfortunate about this. And this is the part that I don't really understand much is because if they're teaching us to apply a skill in the last two problems, they're teaching us to apply a skill. Why in the next problem can that skill not apply? Meaning, if they were teaching us to do square root and then we can do the opposite, why can't that apply for this situation? But they're teaching us to think a little bit further than that. If you get an answer, they're teaching us, try to see if you could put that answer back into the original equation to see if that answer works. And if you got x is equal to 7, the way that you can know that the answer is not proper is that you can put 7 back into the original equation and you can see that you don't get the proper answer. So it's not this number seven doesn't isn't the right answer when you get it every time. So what they want you to do, and I want you to remember what they want you to do, what they want you to do is they want you to, let me clear this just so that we don't get too confused. What they wanted you to do was 5x plus 1 plus 9 equals 3. They want you to subtract 9 from both sides, do the square root of 5x plus 1, <laughs> is equal to negative 6, and they want you to say there's no number that I can put in for x, no real solution that's going to output a negative answer. 
When you do a square root normally, you normally get a positive answer all the time. So the answer is going to be no real solution. So I want you to please comment below. I hope I didn't confuse you too much, but I, I feel like there, this was like a learning opportunity for all of us, including myself, but I also had to show you the wrong way because I know you guys were going to apply the same skills that we learned before into this problem and then it wasn't going to work out. And then I kind of just perceived that you guys were going to have questions in my comment section and I just want to be able to answer your question before you go ahead and take your test. So do I like this problem? No. Are we able to do this problem and get the right answer even though we don't like problems? Yes. That's a life skill. Even though we don't like it, even though we may not be a fan of the answer, we still have to do it and we can still do it right. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next problem.